week in the legislature, we challenged Premier Ford to uphold his COVID-19 law that limits outdoor social gatherings to 25 people. The next day, you hosted an illegal gathering with more than 150 friends at Queen's Park, away from the legislative precinct where you have privilege and protection as an MPP. Why did you risk getting a $10,000 fine as the event organizer, and what were you hoping to achieve, and to what end, uh, or what, what do you think was accomplished? Well, if I had been charged and if I had been found guilty, um, um, it was a minimum $10,000 fine. It could have been higher. Uh, it also includes a, a possibility for uh, incarceration. Um, you know, there's one of the things about nonviolent civil disobedience, which is a, uh, which is again another um, critical component of a of, of a free society, is that is a way to test the law, okay? Um, and you have to be prepared for, for nonviolent civil disobedience to work. Um, you also have to be prepared to accept the consequences, right? right? Um, you know, like criminals don't want to accept consequences and, and that's why their actions aren't called uh, civil disobedience, right. they're, they're criminals. Um, uh, civil disobedience is, is a, one of the few mechanisms people actually have within their grasp and within their ability to exercise. And, and history has shown this throughout the ages. You know, Rosa Parks said, okay, I'm, I'm not just going to sit at the back of the bus. I'm, um, you know, and uh, uh, Henry David Thoreau said, no, I'm not going to support slavery. Um, and I'll, um, um, you can throw the book at me, uh, right. but I'm not going to support slavery. Um, so, you know, and there's many, many examples throughout history. Um, so, um, well, that brings me to actually a question. Uh, you claim that Premier Ford is merely using COVID-19 laws as a scare tactic. What did you mean by this? Uh, as you didn't receive a fine for your illegal gathering in the end, and what does that mean uh, for his laws going forward? Well, I, I think we can see his laws are meaningless, they, and they are being used whether it is to scare people or to uh, coerce obedience to an unlawful statute, um, you know, however you want to characterize that, but it's not being used in the way such as, um, you know, um, a speed limit sign, you know, where you know if, if it says 80 and, you, um, and, a, and a cop sees you doing 120, well, guess what? You're going to get a fine. Right. Um, and, and, the, and the cops aren't generally going to say, well, he's doing only 40 or 50 kilometers over, we'll let him go. Um, no, they'll, they'll come after you. Right. Um, you know, that's how that, that gains and builds respect within the law. That's part of the rule of law, is that the laws are understood, that there's concurrence and acceptance by society with, with the law, and that it's also equally applied. Um, so... Um, and if the law is not applied, then it's not a law, okay? And if the law is not enforced, it's not a law. So um, Ford doesn't want anybody to challenge these laws in a court because I am confident in saying that any court, um, any competent court will, dips, will throw the charges out, will, will, uh, will acquit. Um, uh, I also think uh, any Crown uh, prosecutor would, um, would dismiss the charges before going to trial because it would be in the public interest to do so. What and do you that's, mean by that? Is that because the going to trial might set a, a precedent that, that they don't want to set? Yeah, this, 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 is, this is a dangerous path when you're saying our fundamental freedoms of assembly um, um, no longer exist. Right. Like and that's, for, for what time period? They, they, they always must exist. Right. They, there, there can never be a time that there is that that freedom is removed. Um, and I, so I think the crown would would also uh, um, would dismiss the charges. And we saw it again this week with uh, one of Ford's um, members, Sam Oosterhoff, um, not only broke the law you know, by not being, having his mask on and being, not uh, maintaining six feet and, blah, you know, all the, all these things. Um, 
and being with 50 people inside. And, um, and um, the Premier has said, well, an apology is acceptable. Right. I, an apology is acceptable. So can you imagine uh, having laws, uh, having the rule of law where it says, oh, well, um, you know, we just have evidence that you broke into this bank and stole a bunch of money and robbed this person and that person. Uh, would you mind apologizing? <laughs> you know, like, um, you know, the law has to be proportionate. Uh, the penalties have to be proportionate. Right, and equally applied. And equally applied. Right. So, you know, and the, and, and the Premier has stated unequivocally, I'm going to throw the book at right. people. Um, now, that's, that's, that's a dangerous path as well when the Premier gets to decide how the law will be enforced. Right. So, you know, everything he's doing is reactive, poorly thought out, um, and contradictory to the practices of a functional, competent, Democracy. and reasonable society. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, well, bringing, bringing the topic back to uh, your event at Queen's Park and regarding uh, the mainstream media, we were at your gathering and noticed uh, quite a few discrepancies in the mainstream media's reporting. Uh, first, they claim that your gathering was an anti-mask protest with violence yeah. and uh, with only dozens of people. <laughs> Can you speak to why the media would report your <coughs> event in uh, such a disingenuous way? Well, listen, we know there was no mention of mass. Like, you know, I don't think anybody, there may be somebody mentioned it, uh, but it was, you know, that was not what, uh, it was communicated that this was going to be a gathering of individuals who were like-minded in their promotion of freedom, right? Right. And that there wasn't going to be any protest signs, there wasn't going to be anything. And of course, indeed, we had about 150 people. I didn't count, but by all uh, reasonable, you know, 150, maybe 200, I'm not sure. Um, but does it seem that they're downplaying the significance? Sure, or? and and we see that, uh, you know, the media, unfortunately, has been very how should we say this, their, their appetite and their thirst for something controversial and dangerous back in March um, gave them all an orgasm. <laughs> you know, uh, like that's... So like that this, excitement hasn't subsided in seven months. <laughs> well, that's right. This is, this is, yeah, this is exciting times if you're in the media. We get to report on one of the greatest catastrophes to ever to beset mankind. Well, would you think it's not as exciting to also cover the other side of the coin? Uh, there, there's a significantly large resistance movement against COVID measures all across Canada now. Yeah, so professionally, yes, okay? Um, but uh, people who are in that heightened sense of excitement and, uh, and adrenaline, you know, that's one of the, um, one of the consequences is you don't, really think very well, um, and, and the media hasn't. And, but I think, you know, that's talking about the media back in March and April, and there's been some, some progression here. That's true. Um, and, um, you know, I, I believe this is true, um, is that the media, many people in the media now realize that their overexcitement also contributed to the overreaction. Right. And I believe there's just many people in the media who are now saying we have to be very um, thoughtful in how we don't tarnish our own reputations. While maybe backtracking. Well, <laughs> that's right. Um, so, uh, you know, they're, they're caught in the same pickle as the government. You know, how do they, um, how do they get out of this without looking like absolute fools. Right. Uh, and how do they get out of this uh, without having um, um, liability attached to their actions? Right. This, these are things that governments and the media are doing. And um, so, <clears throat> you know, and, and, you know, there's other elements as well. You know, there's big tech and there's, you know, there's, you know, there's uh, censorship and, and disinformation and, um, you know, like that—that that is happening right. uh, to protect the narrative, 
you know, because there, there's are, let's not forget, there's also another big contributing factor is there are lots of people who are profiting very well out of COVID. And whether it's big tech and whether it's big pharma, um, you know, there's, uh, just think of all the people, uh, mostly white collar, but all like public servants, et cetera, who um, life is pretty good. You right. know, I don't have to commute into work. I don't have to drive an hour every morning and every evening in rush hour traffic. I can sit at home. Uh, in the summertime, I can go on, uh, uh, go in my pool all day and maybe drink a margarita or... Do you think um, that's why perhaps uh, there aren't as many dissenting voices as you would hope because the comfort level uh, under these measures isn't uh, dramatically affected for every swath of society? Yeah, no, there's, there, like I said, some people are not only not equally distributed in the pain, there, there, some people are achieving great benefit. Right. <laughs> you know, and, um, you know and, and this goes for corporate, uh, the corporate world as well. Um, you know, there's... Um, is Walmart and Costco complaining about this? Right. Uh, I don't think so. But Their then by the, by the same uh, token, there are a number of very large corporations that are unequally harmed by the measures, such as the airline industry. What would you say about the... Yeah, yeah. About the, them? Um, yeah, there, there's... The, the governments have decided um, who will be winners and who will be right. losers. Yeah. It's not going to be the marketplace. It's not going to be your endeavors and your motivations and your labors, um, your efforts. Um, if you happen to be on the wrong side, if you have a gym and not a dance studio, you're euchred. Okay? Yeah. Um, last week in Ontario, if you had a gym or a dance studio, you were euchred. Right. Um, Fairly arbitrary in terms It's of arbitrary and, and it's and it's and it's ever changing and it's right. ever shifting and and this and and people are hoping well, you know uh, maybe if we just be uh, compliant uh, non-thinking individuals and do what the government tells us what to do um, maybe this will all end right well well there's I've got to a be message a... for you <laughs> if you're going to act like that if you're going to be acting as unthinking obedient individuals. Um, um, one might argue um, freedom is not well suited to you.